The next talk is going to be by Arton Agafonov and the title is very long but it's uh, Gradient Methods for Optimization Problems that Allow for the Existence of an Inexact Strongly Convex Model of the Objective Function. Yeah. So, thank you. Uh, thank you. So today I'm going to talk about uh, optimization methods uh, which uh, requires a, a delta mu model. So at first we start with some introduction and here I will repeat some words said by uh, my supervisor, Alexander Gasnikov. So the first thing that I want to talk about is uh, the Delta L Oracle by the Waldrick Leon Esterov. So here, instead of having true gradient and true function value, we have some uh, F Delta L and G Delta L that satisfy this inequality. And the idea of it, you can see on this illustration. So. This oracle allows us to use usual gradient methods for non-smooth optimization and other problems. The extension of this idea is uh, the delta L model, where we replace the scalar product to arbitrary function psi, which satisfies that psi xx is zero, and that psi is uh, a convex function by the first argument. And the idea of it is to have some more complex local approximation of functions. So instead of a dot product, we have here function psi. Uh, and we, in this project, we will consider uh, the following optimization problem, is the minimization problem on a closed convex set. And here's some basic definitions that we will need further, is uh, prox function and the Bregman j origins. And it's important to mention that we do not require the one strong convexity in the definition of, of uh, the prox function. And here comes the definition of the delta L mu model. So the D is similar to the definition of delta L model, but we also have a lower bound here. And if you remember the illustration on the first slide, here we also bound function from the bottom, which allows us to have faster convergence rates. And moreover, we will see, we will have uh, and an exact solution of the auxiliary problem. Uh, it's kind of similar to what Alexander Gasnikov said in his talk. And at first, let's consider the first method. method is, it's a gradient method. And we obtain this convergence rate for it in the case of the delta L mu model. So we can see that it's linear and it's faster than the same convergence rate uh, than, uh, for the same method for the delta L model. But it's important to mention that uh, the method does not require the knowledge of the constant mu. So uh, without any information whether our function is strongly convex or not, it will, will, it will work faster. So we can use it for the functions that we know that is convex. And if it's strongly convex, it will work faster. And let's consider the case when the function psi is uh, strongly convex. Uh, this can happen, for example, in composite optimization problem. And we see that M strong convexity of the function psi improves the convergence rate as in the table. Okay, and next we will try to have an adaptive version of this algorithm. And so uh, we do it like usually. We try to make L, the Lipschitz constant, if you want, to smaller on each iteration then we check whether it satisfies the definition of the delta L model, and then we make like the usual gradient step. So about the convergence rate, we see that it converges a bit slower, uh, but still there is no accumulation of an error, and, and it's adaptive, so it's a bit better, but it converges a bit slower. And finally, we'll try to have uh, a fast gradient method for this delta L model. We have one for the delta L model. You can see how it converges on in the second inequation. And here it's important to say that it is required one strong convexity of the prox function. And to obtain the rate of convergence for the delta L model, we will uh, use the restart technique. So let me briefly describe how we construct it. So at first, I want to bound the right part with inexactness. It's in the first point. 
And then using the rate of convergence, we obtain the number of iterations on the first restart. And actually, it found out that on next restarts, the number of iterations is, stays the same. Uh, it's in NK. And then using the rate of convergence, we obtain the number of iterations, and we get the total number of iterations on this method and the convergence rate. And as you remember, here in the first point, we bounded the right side with an exactness. So let's see what, uh, what, what we're going to do with it. So to make it, we need to choose our errors as it's stated here. Indeed, uh, because of we obtain the number of iterations nk, and this number should satisfy this inequality, we have a lower bound on the accuracy epsilon that we want to reach. And if you want to have an arbitrary epsilon, we need to choose deltas as it's stated here. Okay, so that's everything what I wanted to say. That's it. Thanks for attention. Any questions? Okay, so we have 30 minutes for questions. <laughs> No, they do not require Lipschitz, Lipschitz constant, Lipschitz. not the strong connection ah, parameter. It's okay. adaptive on Lipschitz constant. Uh, yes. yes. And, uh, well, but the, the question is uh, like the same. Do you know any examples of, uh, of problems where uh, we can't calculate this Lipschitz uh, constant so it's uh, computationally very uh, expensive? So uh, actually, uh, I don't know. I don't know. but. Yeah, this is my answer. I don't know the application that they're asking for. So I don't know this kind of problem. Okay. Maybe, maybe there is one, but still some like sort of theoretical result on the adaptive version. Okay. Okay.